Sentinels. Masters Reykjavik champions and ostensibly the best team in the world had not dropped a map in competitive Valorant since May 1st, 2021 against Cloud9 Blue in Stage 2 Challengers Finals. Yet, with their return to more localized North American competition in Challenger Stage 3 qualifiers, Sentinels somehow managed to drop Icebox, their first map against up-and-coming Australian team Sonics, who many have had their eyes on to move from the Tier 2 circuit to the Tier 1 Challengers roster. Before we begin, it's worth noting that this map was the choice of Sonics, and that was after history against Sentinels on this map in the last VCC qualifiers, where they lost 13-10. Other teams in NA would be well advised to keep Sonics away from this map as their win rate currently sits at 82.4%, and with a Sentinel scalp amongst the collection, they're likely not going to do much better. So how was Icebox fumbled by Sentinels at the opening of this series? To begin to delve into this, we'll look at the six round streak that helped Sonics begin this map and knock Sentinels well off kilter, as well as a pivotal 19th round that doomed not only the Sentinels economy, but their chances of claiming the map. It's always a mental dub when you can start a series with a solid fake, and that's exactly what Iron did. Throwing their toxic screen across a default B site by section kept a light lean of Sentinels players towards B, even while Sonics were deploying their Recon Arrow and Owl Drone at A, potentially causing a moment of hesitation and debate in the Sentinels' comms while Sonics move into position for a five-man execute. With the site under control, IN once again becomes the utility maestro for the attack, using his poison orb to make pushing over catwalk a very dangerous prospect for defenders. When combined with a sage wall as well, it minimizes avenues of entry towards the spike and forces center for go time and information to burrow through the wall, while also creating a nasty choke point to push through, in the end, at their peril. Round 2 goes as you'd expect for a full Sheriff buy versus the Spectre and Shields. But once again, right off the bat, the Australians engage in a little bit of trickery and subterfuge, showing a little bit of presence on A before disengaging and cutting noise while IN made themselves known again on B as a little bit of a nuisance to drag rotations back over with a heavy Sentinel's lean. Sonic slightly made this decision knowing that Sentinels wouldn't want to push the multiple 50-50s and tight angles of a sites approach to check for Sonics actually leaving when those Spectres are likely in hand. Credit to Sentinels, their retake exhibits some solid gunplay and they take three Spectres off the board, but the weapon and positional advantage for Sonics is just too great to brute force through and they manage to avoid their worst engagement ranges. Moving on to round three is where things get really interesting because Sentinels fumble this loadout matchup. And once again, it's all about the tactical trickery from the Aussies. Time to set foot in mid for the first time on this map. As usual, Irons put down the threatening wall on B while cutting noise to walk mid with Dizzy Life. With a little bit of noise made on A, Sentinels begin to become weary of the tricks and the baits and a loud rotation is made towards the site, and this is how Sick meets his end. Taking a cursory peek down mid after revealing themselves with their noise and losing a gun duel to a very prepared Iron and their Spectre. One rifle down. The two mid players get caught out between a Zom's Pinch and a Sky High Shazam here and both fall, but it's only a Spectre and a Sheriff off the board and they demand the attention upon their angles of the entire Sentinels roster, while those noisemakers on A had fallen silent and crept in behind the distracted defenders. A solid double peek allows for a refrag to take out Dapper while earning Crunchy's res and a scramble to find for remaining Sonic's attackers. Two rifles down. Shazam loses a straight Spectre vs. Phantom duel against Bob with a pre-aim more cautious of the upper levels and is now suddenly two on two. No rifles have been stolen, but they're covering fewer and fewer angles as defensive personnel dwindle. A res onto Plex is all that's needed to force Tens to swing, taking out the Sage but being revealed to the Spectre Goddess Bob and losing their life. Zoms stands alone, having been late to the party after an apprehensive move back towards B after mid-contact and tries to play from high, but just like Shazam loses a straight advantageous duel, scuttling the Sentinel's economy and no doubt bruising some pride in the process. Two rifles recovered, an economy shattered and a defense humiliated, it's time for what we in Britain would call the freebie. That said, against Sentinels, the freebie isn't free. 
between the sheriff and a blade storm, Zen's duelists finally seem to wake up for a moment and a 4 versus 3 is established. Many of these gunfights go as you'd expect given the armament boom of Sonics, but there are a few opportunities for Sentinels on this defense, and I'll present this series of Dapper Peaks without comment. Maybe one comment. <laughs> Yikes. 4-0 and back to your regularly scheduled programming. Powerful buys for each team, including the first appearance of an op in the hands of Shazam on B, mark round 5's beginning. This is starting to get embarrassing. It's time to go hero mode, show why I'm the best player in the game. In tens, probably. Forward positioning on A, no lurkers are going to get the drop on me this time. But it's missed shots, no invulnerable dismiss, no Leah to blind on the disengage, and not even a teammate peeking for a refrag. It's free real estate and cheap momentum for Sonic's A push. Sick plays it well from up top and Sentinels finally have the advantage that they want. A 4 versus 2 post plant on A. All they have to deal with is that pesky trickster iron in his viper's pit and that weird raise on the periphery. An unfortunate recon dart from Dapper allows iron to sit pretty behind a pixel dodge and lie in wait for an unlucky Sentinel. Two would be even better, but the refrag is there and the pit is gone. Click stands alone in a 1v2, and well, this clip will speak for itself. Can't get a kill at all. Instead of sick getting it, Plague's destroy the wall at a perfect time. The satchel goes out and the show Oh my hits. goodness. Oh my word, Plix. A 1v2 to push Sonic to a perfect lead again. Another round in the economic dumpster for Sentinels who can barely afford comfort food, let alone weaponry. At least for Lost Streak is given over maximum bonus, but now it's time to once again take another look at the Sonic Strat Roulette with a high IQ round. The interesting thing about this round is the quick analysis of potential threats from Sonics. They know that without full rifle buys, a solid contest on a mid push is unlikely, and they potentially encounter shotgun barrels on A's tight corners and 50-50s. So a quick split to B and a plant away from default after some trades and gunfights puts the spike squarely in the sights of a post plant on mid so comfortable it's likely that they installed a couch there. A trio of nasty angles up against one Healy boy with a marshal signals checkmate in favor of Sonics, and they secure a 6-0 lead. Now we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Needless to say, over the next few rounds, Sentinels quote-unquote got their shit together, so we're going to zoom in finally on round 19, the death knell of the map win streak. <laughs> Round 19 is where Sonics finally managed to stop the bleeding of a 3-loss streak on their defense, but not without huge economic loss, and Sentinels are looking to put the boot in on this half and put the Australians to bed. Once again, the round analysis begins with a look at Iron, who has their toxic screen bisecting A while using their own presence to gather information on B, giving them a strong global presence across the map, which will come to doom Sentinels by slowing them down long enough for a highly reactive Sonics to rotate towards A and meet the Death Ball stack who have only shown a recon bolt to betray their presence. Still, Iron raises the wall and Sentinels stop in their tracks, but information still betrays their numbers to Sonic's defenders as they hear the deployment of a Leah, a Slow Orb, and an Updraft, so there are at least four people here. After suffering the first loss, Bob critically decides to wreak havoc with the Sentinels' positions and formations with a Hunter's Fury from mid, creating a carnage on site that allows for Crunchy to make an easy swing and execute on Zombs, while a refrag is wanting due to Sick being mid warcast. The wall comes up to be doubly regretful as it ends up trapping Sick between a grenade and a hard place. Huddled into the corner to avoid the Hunter's Fury, the Paint Shells manage to establish a numbers advantage for Sonics. While Iron gets picked up on the flank, they were the least important player post-execute for Sonics, with the push already having been stalled and only a spectre in hand, the danger of a flank could critically force Dapper to watch back instead of potentially being available for double peaks and refrags on the site proper. 
Bob, once again, masterclasses on the Sova, pinging both Tin's mid plant and an op wielding Shazam with a recon bolt. It's increasingly curious that Tenz was opting to try and stick the plant here, when from an earlier engagement, they knew that Plix was playing up on the catwalk. Yet in the heat of a the moment, they don't account for it while trying to counter swing the pressure from mid onto Shazam, and they get caught freely. An ignominious end to a last ditch buy, Dapper loses the final gunfight and Sentinels exit round 19 with no money and only a blade storm and Hunter's Fury to really pin their hopes upon. Sonics give no quarter in their final round and leverage their greater equipment to massacre another full A push, leaving an enraged Sentinels down their first map in months and after an unimpeachable international tear. Some might argue that this is one of Tenz's most toothless maps in his history, but you know what they say about poking a sleeping bear. In conclusion, from the seven rounds briefly analyzed here, Sonic's got one over on Sentinels not only from some great gunplay, but also using subterfuge, trickery, and fakery to ensure they always had a strong numbers advantage on their sight takes and constantly rolling a strat roulette on the attack that left Sentinels guessing many times. While the rest of this series may have been less glorious for Sonics, claiming the end of a map win streak is certainly a feather in their cap, and this team will be one to watch for upcoming qualifiers. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to support the channel, and if you'd like to support my forays into Valorant, please feel free to share my casting showreel links down below, and tell me what other content you'd like to see from me. Thank you very much for watching.